Welcome back to the My Everyday Chaos podcast, a podcast for women looking for God's voice and biblical focus in the face of daily distraction. I'm your host, Alexandra Govan, and today with me on the podcast, I have Melissa Miller joining. And Melissa is the women's ministry leader for the Boston Church, where I also work. She is my mentor, big sister, uh, the my birth coach, actually. Fun fact, she introduced me to my husband. So basically, Melissa is a lot of important things in my life, and I'm so excited that she is here with us today. Yes, it's great to be here. I have scored a lot of points with Alexandra over the years and have known her her whole life. So that's been really special, but it is really encouraging to be here. And um, I know as we're all in the holiday spirit, COVID style, uh, I have found it's still full of lots of distractions. It's true. But <laughs> yes. Um, and I have been really loving the scripture that is a Christmas classic, but it's really helped focus my heart lately in Isaiah chapter nine, one we all know well. Um, but it says, for to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And I love the way that the scripture describes who Jesus is, who God is in our lives, certainly in the midst of distractions um, that we are truly living in during this time, but in a time mm -hmm. where I know personally, for myself and a lot of people, we're all feeling a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great. What do you feel like for you, Melissa, as you think about this verse? And I got to hear you actually do like a lesson on this scripture last week, I think it was. Um, and what do you feel like it is about this verse? Because I love the idea that Jesus is going to come to the earth and he's going to be all of these different things for us. And I guess for you, like, how do you hold on to kind of those different qualities of God and of Jesus when life feels, you know, not peaceful, not counseling, encouraging, all of that stuff? Yes, good question. I don't think I've mastered it yet. But um, I think I love even how this first starts off with just talking about the government is upon God's shoulders. And yeah. I think we're living in a day and age and certainly right now with a lot of, it's been a lot of political unrest. There's been so much fear, anxiety, emotional uh, toll that I know we've all felt. And even when I think about these things, um, you know, he starts off by talking about Jesus being our wonderful counselor. Mm -hmm. I think we have certainly hit an all time high of all of us needing therapists and counselors. Um, <laughs> you know, a, a space where we can go and there's no agenda, but to be heard and to be listened to. Mm -hmm. And yet I think seeing Jesus as this ultimate counselor who already knows me, he doesn't have to get to know me, mm -hmm. um, but that he provides such a safe place where he can guide me with wisdom, with his counsel. Um, I think, especially as I think about the the ways that he's described here, I think that one stands out to me a lot and the idea of him being mighty God, just that the reminder that he's in control, because I know for me as well, I like to be in control. I like to be able to know what's happening. I would love to be able to plan what's happening and it go according to the way that I want things to go. And yet I think I've had to learn certainly in this year, but in the past years that God's in control and his thoughts and ways are higher and better than mine, mm -hmm. even if his timing or his answers are different from what I want them to be. Mm -hmm. Think about the idea of him being our everlasting father. And I just had the marked the year anniversary of my own dad passing, which has rocked my world. It has been incredibly painful. And I think all along there's been part of it, you know, not that God has ever ordained or wants us to suffer, but I think the idea I grew up with an incredibly amazing spiritual father who in my, in my world was the closest um, example of God's character to me. And I remember mm -hmm. even my dad, as he first got sick, telling me that he didn't want his sickness to hurt my faith because of how I valued even my relationship with my dad. And he said to me, you know, I want 
God's got to be your ultimate father. He's the one that won't ever leave you. And so when I read this verse and think about God being the everlasting father, I think even back to that conversation and the way that I've had to transform my mind and heart to really letting God be that. And when I think of father, I think of just total protection and someone who is uh, a refuge, a rock, um, and that God is that eternally. There's no disease or, you know, no um, anything that I know even a lot of people have grown up with, with hard father relationships. And yet God proves to be the best and one that never leaves us is quite amazing. And then I think you know, certainly in the time of the holidays and all of that, the idea of him being Prince or Lord of Peace um, is one that I try to wrap my brain around um, often and I'm sure fail at more because I do think the distractions and the idea of trying to find peace when I can be filled with fears or anxieties um, can be hard. And yet so many times, it, this is a prophecy about Jesus coming, and yet Jesus talks so much about how all he desires is to take our burdens and to provide us with a peace that transcends understanding, and that is so comforting to me. Oh, that is so great. I think that you just said, I mean, so many helpful things about Jesus in, you know, that that little bit there, because I do think so many of those things are things that I think I try to find outside of God, mm-hmm. you know, trying to find counsel. Not that obviously you and I are both big fans of counseling, but yep. I can rely more on, you know, what the world says rather right. than what God says. And, and counseling totally has its place. But I think remembering that God's wisdom is also real. And the idea of having a great father and knowing that, God as our father still has to be uh, number one and um, everything you said about being mighty God, Prince of Peace, all of it is incredible. And I know I have been blessed to be able to kind of walk through the journey of grief that you and your family have been on the last five years with the loss of your dad. And I know that has just been such a, such a challenging time, lots of holidays that were hard and Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure that there are a lot of people um, listening right now that either are having a very different holiday season than usual and grieving kind of just different, you know, and and things not looking the same. But then also a lot of people that are grieving loved ones or um, different things like that. And I feel like you have definitely had to learn how to grieve in the midst of the holidays. And would you have any kind of just like advice for how to handle the holidays during a time of grief? Yeah, good question. I mean, I think first of all, we all do it differently. Mm -hmm. So the idea of putting expectations on it, just wipe that away. Um, Because I think there is no right or wrong way to grieve. Um, My dad died the week before Thanksgiving. And then uh, went straight into uh, watching my mom celebrate her anniversary. And then we went into Christmas. And so we were like, well, at least we're going to get all these first over with very quickly. Um, And so what that looked like last year, even compared to this year, where I still feel like we're grieving. But last year was so raw. um, And I think I would have done some things differently than I did. Uh, I decided to host Thanksgiving with my uh, husband's family who are amazing, Um, but I probably needed a little bit more uh, either takeout or going somewhere else or just- I remember that. I thought you were crazy. (laughs) That might not have been my best idea. I thought distractions would be helpful. Um, And I've also learned that every day and honestly every hour, especially when you're in the the beginning throes of grief, there's just no telling what you're going to feel. And so I think, you know, for me, it helped to talk a lot um, a few months after uh, I have been getting some grief therapy. That's been really helpful. But I do think having just no expectations of what it should be or what it shouldn't be. Um, This year, I've really 
you know, wanted to make it feel fun and Christmas. We still did some of the Christmas traditions. I didn't put lights up. I didn't get a Christmas card out. Um, and so I think it was really just, that was the advice I got from a lot of people. Be gracious with yourself. And, you know, I think it's literally day by day. Mm. Um, so. Yeah, I think that's so helpful because I think that um, in our society, we can have this pressure to grieve the right way, whatever that mm-hmm. is, or grieve the way other people grieve. And I know that's something you and I have talked a lot about, even, you know, as I have gone through kind of some similar things, but you and I handle things very differently. And, <laughs> and I think you have been so helpful for me to go, it's okay to like, stop right now. And Crap. Alexandra put it compartmentalizing and I am like all the time it's always I will tell you about it and uh I but then it's probably. bad because when it hits me it hits me like it, a freight train hard and I can't move for like three yeah. days so mm-hmm. it's kind of a I don't know everyone I guess we all have our we're thing. a good pair <laughs> at least we grieve at different times that's <laughs> yes and when we grieve turn. together then we can be each other's comfort. That's right. That's right. Well, no, I think everything that you shared is so helpful having no expectations. And, but I also think, I I do think just, it occurs to me, even talking with you, how important it is to have people that you can share grief with and share these kind of things. Because I do think, where would I be without you know, sitting on your couch crying and having those moments and, oh man, it's making me emotional right now. Um, but I think we all need people like that, that you, that that don't have expectations of you and that you don't have to have expectations of yourself with. And And finding the right people is huge because unfortunately grief is an awful club to be a part of, but really I've also learned that unless you're a part of it, you can't understand. And Mm -hmm. so I have found it very helpful to talk to those who have gone through it, even if we're grieving and have gone through it differently, there's an understanding. And I think being gracious with people that they literally have no idea what to say Mm -hmm. and either their lack of saying anything or saying stupid things is all fair game and you just have to go find the people in the awful club. It's true. And eventually, eventually we all become a part of the club. It is true. That's awful to say, but we all eventually, I remember my mom used to always say, like, if you haven't gone through anything, like, you know, you'd kind of feel bad, like, oh, I haven't been through anything hard. My life is like easy compared to other people's. I think we can think that in America, especially when you look at like third world, world countries and things other people experience. But then you realize, oh, we all will go through something awful. (laughs) Well, and even what we've been living in. I think, you know, the little things to the big things, we've all grieved a lot this year. There's been a lot of loss, a lot of just things that were changed and are different than what we ever could have imagined, you know? Oh, totally. there's, There's obviously the death and loss of life and loved ones, but, you know, my daughter's a senior this year, my youngest daughter graduated from fifth grade those you know the fifth grade graduations aren't as big in the grand scheme of things but we've all experienced canceled canceled things not getting to see family members having things you know with this virus touch people all of the social adjustment and there's just been so many countless things this year that I think has forced most of us into a grief club. I agree. (laughs) No, it's true. I think that's a great point. Like I do think about kids and I never had to experience wearing a mask. Like I never had to experience not being able to (laughs) hang out with my friends and stay six feet away on my birthday. You know, those are they're making really trendy masks now. I've got some cute Christmas ones. (laughs) I love it. Uh, Well, this has been so helpful. I think I really hope and pray that this is going to help a lot of people that are kind of feeling like, yay, I need the holidays more than ever, but also, oh man, there's still some hard things going on. And, um, but thank you so much, much for being with me today. Thanks for having me on here for a while. So I know you have been, so here I am. (laughs) Great to meet you. 
Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, please uh, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. We also are now posting the videos on YouTube. Hence, me and Melissa actually did our makeup today. So you're welcome, YouTube. Yes. That is a big thing these days. <laughs> it's true. But if you enjoy it, I won't tell you what I might have <laughs> below my sweater or if it matches my sweater. That's the best part. That's Zoom. That's Zoom at its finest. Exactly. exactly. Uh, but thanks for joining us. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone. And we'll catch you in 2021. Bye.